grab some old expired paste out of the fridge and you know go to put it on a stencil we're not printing anything so we don't care if it's, it's fit for use we want to make sure we can remove it sometimes we'll open a jar and it's just a brick it's a total brick all of it's so old all of the volatiles all of the flux components have made its way out uh, every time we open it we lose some and it's just you know that's pretty obvious that there's no fit for use except maybe a, a fishing weight outside of the obvious what are some of the things that we are specifically concerned about with solder paste and its fit for use? Yeah, there are really a few different uh, phenomenon that we're concerned about when evaluating whether or not a solder paste is fit for use and uh, looking at data using this measurement. So that, that same phenomenon that you're talking about does drive a lot of expiration of, of solder paste. So as you that solder paste is sitting in the jar, at uh, in storage or once you pull it from storage you might not think about it at, at all times but the the activator in that solder paste is constantly reacting with the oxide layer on the, the solder powder and from that you build up metal salts in there that increase the viscosity you can use up some of that activator in the the paste and it eventually will become a hardened mass and you can get cold welding, a bunch of other uh, uh, issues with that solder paste. And a lot of that failure is driven by that reaction that's going on between the, the powder and the flux, uh, which drives its, its expiration and, and failure in storage. What we end up doing with this uh, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy is we're able to look at and extract information about that reaction that's occurring between the flux and powder in order to look at, uh, is this solder paste too old where it it's, might be less active or the viscosity has changed slightly? So you can investigate defects like that or even just variation lot to lot in the solder paste uh, or other factors. We're always there to catch mistakes. There'll be no shortage of business. We all have job security when it comes to solving problems, right? Uh, there'll always be problems in our industry, in any industry for that matter, but particularly ours because it moves at the speed of light, literally and figuratively. One of some of the methods to prevent solder paste from going bad based on the types of failures you see, you know, wh what's the best practice to make sure that every time they run a test, it just tells them that everything is good? Yeah, you know, best preventative measures that you can take are the ones that I think are really already well publicized and known. The manufacturer's guidelines are really quite accurate when it comes to, to handling solder paste, where you want to ensure that it's it's never heated up, to ensure it's, it's uh, kept at room temperature. Don't open the solder paste cold, stir it to, to homogenize it well. If you follow to the T, everything that the solder paste manufacturers recommend. In, in general, in a lot of cases, it will perform quite well. But there are, also, there are plenty of areas where you can start to, to run into issues where you start to deviate from that. So in shipping, that's a very much an uncontrolled process at times. You can't track and, and monitor what's happening to the paste during shipping. And so you have a little bit less control there. Same as during handling. So if, if you're following everything perfectly, these materials really are quite, quite good, but there's always the traps along the way. Join us on the second and fourth Tuesday of each month for new episodes of Reliability Matters.